Vanessa, when we were talking this morning, you mentioned that one of the ways, one of the gifts you received from Harvard Divinity School in your education there was a reawakening, a reappreciation for the importance of good ritual. I'd love to hear from, from you and from Stephanie about how that appreciation came about, how you understood the power of ritual, and then how you learned from that and the way you shaped the communities that you're leading. Yeah, so I, I'm Jewish, and, you know, we are a religion of ritual. There is a way to grieve, and there is a way to do the Passover Seder. There's a way to welcome the Sabbath. I mean, there's a way to do everything. And I think having been raised in that, it's just something that you start doing by rote and don't necessarily, at least I stopped finding much meaning in it, um, especially the more frequent, like the Sabbath and, you know, the, the ones that you do every week, you just start doing them. And then um, in divinity school, I was reminded, and there's a story that I think we learned, I mean, it was like the first lecture Mm. of intro to ministry studies, (laughs) um, is a story that Stephanie told about um, a town in France, a Huguenot town in France that for, you know, generations had been oppressed by, in this Catholic country. And, um, And they really geared themselves towards the idea of radical hospitality, that if someone knocks, you open the door. And, um, you know, when World War II broke out, Jewish, um, Jewish French people started knocking on their doors. And out of just habit and practice, you know, this town opened their doors and saved thousands of Jews. And I was so moved by that, by, you know, that uh, this, the idea of welcoming the Sabbath every week is not just, you know, something that we do because it's the weekend, but it's something that we do because out of humility that our bodies shouldn't be at work all the time Mm -hmm. and to remind ourselves that some people have to work all the time and that this is a privilege and that our our minds need rest you know in order to have our next great ideas and um and that rest needs preparation for before the sabbath you have to do all of your cooking because you can't do any work on the sabbath day and so that you know the world needs preparation and so it just reawakened this idea in me that if if I want to be a certain kind of person, I have to practice it. it it's not going to be by accident that mm-hmm. I am the person who I want to be. Mm-hmm. And I learned that story from Dorothy Bass, who's a great practical theologian who has you know, spent a lot of her career unpacking the idea of practices within Christianity, drawing on its Jewish roots, really, I think really helping Christians recover an understanding of their Jewish roots and to say it is important to practice being the kind of people we want to be, the kind of church we want to be, the kind of Christian we want to be, um, and and trying to look at ordinary things like how do we eat together, how do we learn to forgive each other, how do we offer hospitality to each other, um, and to excavate from the tradition, from Christianity and from Judaism, um, the the resources for that. Um, so this has a, a lineage that, that, you know, goes back a long way. Um, but that's been, I think, a really important um, part of this whole project. It's something that I think that the ritual I'm most proud of being a part of in Judaism or the grieving rituals. And I find that when when people are grieving, that is something I can offer them that is of the most help, which is, you know, for seven days after you lose someone, there are very strict rules. You do if if you are close to that person, you don't have to talk. Mm-hmm. You are entitled to a certain level of care from your community. And then, you know, for the few weeks after that, within the Shloshim, the 30 days, there is a different set that you should start moving out of those first seven days, but you're still, you still don't have to go back to work. You still, you know, are in mourning in all sorts of ways. And then there's another set of 11 months after that. Um, you're only allowed to celebrate things if you also have a job. So if you go to a wedding, you have to have a purpose at the wedding. You have to be carrying the extra pair of shoes of the bride or something. And the d- idea, again, is that you're you're in a special place of fragility and mourning. And so th- this is a, an invitation to have a purpose. Mm-hmm. And so you're not too consumed with your own sadness. Mm-hmm. And I just have found it's certainly helpful for me, but it's a set of laws that frees people rather than restricts people to feel their feelings and to know, but in 30 days, I'm gonna have to move on. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think people feel freed by those restrictions. Mm -hmm. Mm 